So our next speaker is actually also connected to Artisans Asylum. I met him there when he was giving a demonstration on flame-worked glass and neon lighting. Wayne Stratman received a PhD by published papers from the University of Sunderland in the UK for his years of research and writing, advocating and making sculpture of neon and other advanced forms of lighting. Pretty much he's learned everything there is to know about glass and how you fill it and how you light it. He also, I have found out recently, is an avid reader. And if you want to know more about him, you can come to our book club. <laughs> but for now, welcome Wayne Stratton. Cheers. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm an engineer, artist, and uh, today I'm speaking to you as a, a glass maker as well. Um, I think the simplest definition of what I do and have done for the last uh, many years is take electricity and turn it into light by using glass as the medium to essentially um, separate those worlds of uh, the plasma that I work with, which is what's inside of a neon tube and the other plasma tubes I work with, from the outside world. And so um, today, uh, thanks to my wonderful assistant, Greg put together a number of slides uh, his definition of what I do, and I'm seeing him for the second time today along with you. And I'm um, just going to show you a little bit about what we do in the studio um, daily basis and some of the work we've done over the years. Um, um, <clears throat> this is an example, um, opening slide, but this is an example of a glass neuron. It's about that big in diameter. Um, blown glass. Inside of it, it has uh, chemical phosphors that give the color of the neuron center there. And then filling the space is a mixture of krypton and iodine gas. This is very typical of the type of sculpture that uh, we make in the studio. And here's a few shots of some of the things you may have seen out in the world in, in science museums, what have you. Uh, we are, for our tiny little shop in the South End, we are the world's supplier of plasma globes. Whether you go to Moscow or Singapore or Western Australia, if there's a plasma ball in a science museum, it came from our little tiny studio. And we make the biggest in the world. Um, the one on the right, lower right there, is the biggest glass blank you can buy in the world. Um, that piece of glass, the raw glass alone, costs $6,000 before we do anything to it. Um, some of you may be Star Trek fans, since you're all probably geeks like me. And you can see in the background, upper uh, corner there, one of the things that got us on the map is we made um, something called lumen glass, one of my patented um, processes. I was working on developing plasma TV and came up with a process for making flat glass that lit up and was kinetic. And so if, ever, if you ever see the Borg character in Star Trek, behind them is their charging station. That also came from our little studio in the South End. And here's some more sculptures that um, I've made over the years that are in museums around the world. Um, lumen glass is made out of window glass, just fused together in a, in a kiln. Um, the air is removed and gas is put in, and these are all kinetic. And by using a water jet cutter, you can cut the glass in any shape you can draw. Um, and we can actually make them in three dimensions as well by taking the hot glass when it's fused at almost 1,400 degrees you go in with a luminized suit, you can take and twist the glass all up and cause it to freeze in that uh, shape as well. Um, I started out doing neon many years ago, and um, my assistant Greg is now building his own neon shop um, to get started in all this. And this is where I started back in um, the Paleolithic times, <laughs> making various neon. The, I did a, a series in the upper uh, right-hand corner of Picasso drawings. Right below that, a uh, series of mathematical um, representations. And then some protest work, too. The no greed one is when um, our studio building was being, we were, the, the owner was trying to force this all out, so we had a big protest, and so I made this a sign. Um, just a few sh shots of our shop. It's a little bit hard to see here, but um, it is very, very crowded. Um, being inner city, uh, we have a lot of stuff. And um, there's equipment all over for doing virtually any type of glass you can name. As a matter of fact, Corning, you all know Corning Glass, they hired me for about seven years to be their consultant to make glass for them for research. 
because uh, I could do it faster and better in my little shop than they could in their $5 billion company. <laughs> and a few uh, shots of me working. That's, I'm working on a glass blower's lathe in that upper right-hand corner. That looks like a metal lathe, but both head and tail stock turned together so you can hold glass, heat it up with torches, and <clears throat> bring it together, blow it out, what have you. Um, and I'm making a piece for a sculpture. Those are um, uh, golden gloves there. I made out of glass, part of a, a narrative piece. Uh, here's where I spend most of my time, hanging upside down, inside of a kiln, uh, doing a lot of my glass work. Um, it's given me a unique set of skills that, <laughs> that aren't like most other glass workers, because I'm always attaching something inside of a kiln that, so that the glass can be evacuated of air and gases can be put inside of it. <clears throat> These are a few of the pieces, just random pieces we uh, picked out of many hundreds. Uh, we work primarily with borosilicate or Pyrex glass. It's a laboratory type stuff. And we put various gases in there, uh, krypton, iodine on the left, pure krypton at very high pressure to make a lightning tube. We make Jacob's Ladders, the climbing arc you see in Frankenstein sets. And these are some big tubes. We make a lot of stuff for trade shows. And these are this big in diameter, uh, human size. And this is for a um, display for Chevrolet, I believe, in Germany. This is the piece that I was making on the lathe. This is called Trivial Encounters for a, I had a solo museum show a few years ago. And each one of these chess pieces was individually made around a different individual with a whole little story inside each one. And there's no electrical connection. There's a <coughs> transmitting surface under the bottom of the board. So when you set the piece down, it lights up. But if you pick it up off of it, it goes out. Uh, crackle tubes. This is where we fill the tubes full of cut up pieces of tubing or little glass beads coated with what are called phosphors to get different colors. And um, the one on the left, we made 125 of those for Euro Disney. This is a fun, relatively recent piece called a Mesmer tube. This is a slow, meandering um, kind of electrical discharge and uh, mimicked after the, the movement and brightness and randomness of um, the most famous light art piece ever made. Who, who can name what the most famous? best-selling light art piece ever made. Lava lamp, yeah. <clears throat> People are intrinsically, psychologically drawn to random motion that's bright and never repeats. So I, this is my electronic version. A few other sculptures that I've made, um, all out of handmade blown glass. And the one on the right is similar to the piece that I'm going to be making later today. Uh, it's a molecular piece, and if it's successful, it'll be about this big. <clears throat> I um, made a bunch of those. Uh, we're just sold to the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry here. Permanent exhibition. And some of the lumen glass, which I described earlier. We do bar tops all over the world so you can get drunk and play with the moving lights. And, <laughs> uh, another sculpture. Um, any of you heard of Dean Kamen, the uh, inventor? Um, we made a piece similar to this for to, for Dean Kamen for his birthday. Apparently his minions or the people who work for him give him a tribute piece every year on his birthday. Um, and we found out Dean, Dean Kamen's father was a noted artist from Mad Magazine. All of you know Mad Magazine? Yeah, well, we had made a piece that combined Dean Kamen's inventor's life with his father's Mad Magazine imagery. And we also do other crazy things like mold blowing glass. Uh, there's a brain on the right. An artist came to us, wanted to be immortalized in plasma, so we took his head and <laughs> made a plasma piece. Um, we also can do metal sculptures. And if you want to, our metal workers, uh, jewelers type thing, we can actually take your metal, put it inside a glass piece, and cause it to light up in many different ways. So that's just bent, just stainless steel wire in there, and we can make it glow. Um, <clears throat> and some other. Um, Pieces showing the silvering process. I'm going to be silvering the piece I'm making this afternoon, so not only is it going to be a big molecule, again, if it all works, it'll also be silvered. So uh, this is pieces showing chemical silvering here. 
Uh, more pieces showing flamework glass and silvering. That robot on the right, that looks like it's metal, but it's actually blown glass. It's been silvered, put inside of another outside envelope, and we transmit energy through the silvering into the gas fill, causing it to light up with fingers of light. Uh, more pieces from that same, um, Greg calls it the 50s nostalgia. <laughs> Shows what Greg knows. This goes back to the 30s. That's right, Greg. <laughs> And we also do incandescence. Uh, rarely, incandescence, believe it or not, is about 100 times as hard as anything you've seen previously. I really uh, got an appreciation for how difficult it was for Edison to make the first incandescent bulbs. To make a filament light up bright white and not burn out, very, very difficult. Um, uh, typically, we used to call them fuses, not light bulbs, because you turn them on and they're gone. But uh, I have made some sculpture. Um, And this is another uh, fairly new piece. This is a piece we showed two years ago at the Maker Faire in New York. Um, it's a glow discharge, bent wire inside of a glass environment that is caused to glow with a, what's called a sheath vol voltage around the wire. So the wire glows orange. There's no heat whatsoever. But you can take on the left-hand side is a um, little bit from a Keats poem um, that I particularly love. And, um, the one on the right, we made the world's most biggest uh, Nixie clock. Those of you know what a little Nixie tube is? Uh, well, first of all, I just had to figure out how to make them. And I made a small one, and then I said, let's see how big I can go. And this is the biggest Nixie clock that I believe can be made. And those are individual vacuum tubes. And uh, so now we have a new capability where we can put metal inside of glass, make it light up, and then addressable from the outside by computers, sensors, what have you. So it's a whole new area of technology. And this is another piece we did this past year. We won the top prize in the World Maker Fair for, we made an eight foot tall plasma uh, marionette robot, all computer controlled. And so this is fully animated and it was at the, the New York World Maker Fair and um, got quite a bit of attention. <laughs> and that's it. Thank <laughs> you.